Hey Cake Chums and welcome back to another video. Now I'm really excited about this one this week because I have been trying to collaborate with this individual for gosh almost a year now. First we tried to do it in person and then the pandemic happened then we tried to do it online and life happened but finally after in all seriousness about a year I've been able to pin this person down so without much further ado let's get to the video. In case it wasn't already clear from this week's thumbnail, today we are being joined by none other than Natalie Porter of Immaculate Confections. <laughs> Welcome, Natalie. <laughs> Woo! Hello. So if you don't already know, Natalie is a huge star of the cake world, um, an entrepreneur, an author, a creator, and she has just revolutionized the art of sugar floristry as it is known i guess is that a fair name for it natalie i, I don't you know can think... if you want. We're, we're building it high rob <laughs> we're building it very high well why not so essentially natalie is well known for making sugar flowers and i remember when i first started making and decorating cakes i found the whole concept of sugar floristry or making sugar flowers incredibly intimidating so many of the, the kind of the books and videos out there talk about things like botanically accurate and you know all these fine details and Natalie very much I guess your your kind of method is is slightly more yeah, approachable. I don't, I don't much care about that I just want to make things that are pretty so sometimes that will be that they're botanically correct sometimes they're a little bit different than that um, I will play with colors and shapes and styles and stuff and I just think as long as you come out with something that's pretty at the other end if it's not you know, entirely accurate to nature, then so what? Now, to help you on this journey to bringing achievable flowers to the masses, you have created quite a few products and, and books and things, haven't you? I have. Sorry, I'm looking at you weird because I have no idea what it is that you're going to say next. I know, isn't it exciting? Isn't it? Yes, I have. Yeah, we've got, um, so we have a, a range of products. It all started off with um, the Rapid Rose, which is what you guys will see shortly. <laughs> Um, which is a, a little gadget for the making of quick roses um, and that I gave you that so long ago it's in the old packaging I haven't seen that for ages and then since then I've written a couple of books and we sell colours as well we have a range of colours and all sorts of things and so we're going to be using some of those things today aren't we to create kind of a simple valentines -y themed project that hopefully someone who is entirely clumsy and not really very good at delicate things will be able to achieve mm -hmm. but hopefully all of you guys will be able to achieve it as well so would you like to tell us what we're going to be making today Natalie? Oh, sure um so we're going to make a rose um it is the simplest rose you'll ever make in your life but they look super super pretty um and you guys are going to get to see me teaching rob to do it in real time as we as we sit and record right here <laughs> so yeah it's very easy to do and valentine's Day, we're just going to go lovely bright reds, deep green leaves, and just hopefully come out with a beautiful rose on a stem. Hopefully. We will, it'll be fine. Okay, I believe you. So, to make today's project, Natalie, what am I going to need? Um, so you're gonna want some flower paste. We've got some red and some green here, um, which we've done with, um, they're with our colors, aren't they? Um, by which I mean my colors. <laughs> Um, as beautifully modelled there. Um, so yeah, it's the leaf green and the red that we've used, so which are part of a, a newer set. And I think it's about, I, I would guess, about 30 grams of red and then just a little lump of green to make a few leaves. I, I might have made a little bit extra, just just in case. That's fine. Well, hopefully you'll fall in love with this so much that you'll want to make even more and then you've got ah. your materials ready. <laughs> um, so we have that. We are going to need um, rapid rose pad. We're using the nine centimetre rapid rose cutter today. Um, and then for the inside of it, I've got a 20 millimetre polystyrene ball that has been hot glued to a piece of 20 gauge wire. I should um, explain by the way that Natalie very kindly put together a little kit for me, which I have here. <laughs> 
Um, and then other than that, it's just sort of your normal sugar crafting tools, so like ball tools, Dresden tool, um, a petal pad, workboard, rolling pin. Um, do you have a rolling pin, Rob? The store of that. <laughs> but yes, yes, I have a, a okay. I have a rolling pin. What sort of size ball tool should I be aiming for? Um, the biggest one that you've got. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. Um, and then as an extra optional step, you can use um, a veining stick to give it some veins, which I think we said you've not got one. No, um, but there's the... one on order. So if the doorbell goes while we're filming, <laughs> that's what it is. And then you set a plain pad. Um, and that is about it. So all the gear and no idea. And I just say loving, first of all, these lovely colours and secondly, the, the cute shapes as well. Oh, do I need like a workboard or shall I work straight onto the worktop? Oh, that's whichever you prefer. I have a workboard here, but if your worktop's good for rolling out and cutting on and stuff, then that's fine too. I'll get a workboard just in okay. case. Okay, so the first thing we need, to, so we'll do the rose first and we'll worry about the leaves in just a little bit. Grab your flower paste and give it a nice knead so that it's softened up and ready. If you find that from colouring your flower paste, and this is true when you're doing any dark colour, so whether it's deep red to bright green, um, a navy, something like that. If it goes a little bit soft from adding the colour, you can always pop a wee bit of um, Tylo or Gumtech CMC or indeed Gumtrag in there. And you just want a tiny little bit and it will help firm it back up. Just for the benefit of you guys, by the way, I have Natalie on a screen over here. So whenever you see me looking that way, I'm looking at what Natalie's doing. So what you can see on the screen is what I can see over here. <laughs> so that's what's going on. So it's not that you're sitting there refusing to look me in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> First thing we're going to do is prepare our ball, which you want to take just a little ball about yay big. So it's about the size of a chickpea. Large chickpea. Shape into a little cone. Oh, into a cone, sorry. And then grab your, um, your glue or your water pen or whatever it is that you are using. You're just gonna smush that little cone on like that. Make the ball a little pixie hat, basically. So, so why should you use a polystyrene ball and not just a, a lump of flour paste? Um, that's a great question, Rob. So well, thank it's, you. <laughs> um, it's a couple of reasons. First off, um, it makes it really light. So if you're doing a big rose and you've got a ball in the middle that's sort of like a 30 or 40 mil ball, if that was paste, it would weigh an absolute ton, which then makes them a pain to arrange on the cake because they're so heavy, um, is the first thing. And then the second thing is that because I use a hot glue gun to secure the wire or a cocktail stick or whatever, they are ready to use straight away and I don't have to have been organised enough to have prepared them two or three days in advance so they can be completely dry by the time I make my flowers. Not that organised. <laughs> Never have been. Let's have a little look at your... Okay, perfect. So what we've done is turned our ball into a cone shape. Um, I do it this way for two reasons. First one is polystyrene balls are way cheaper than polystyrene cones because they are a craft thing. So you can pick them up like dozens of them for a couple of quid on eBay or whatever. Um, and then it also means that if you end up with a little gap in your first petals, it's going to be looking down on the same colour as your petals instead of like onto the white polystyrene. Um, so for the viewers at home, I might already have had a go at making my first rose because Natalie might Natalie's in control of the recording because she's got swankier software than I have. But Natalie wasn't in charge of pressing the record button apparently. So <laughs> we're going to go again, and um, we're going to pretend that I'm I'm doing it for the first time, and you're just going to be all really impressed by my amazing first attempt. The Natalie, over to you. So the first thing we're going to do is roll out and cut two of our nine centimeter five petal shapes um because flower paste is so stiff i always find it's easier to just roll the amount you need rather than trying to roll out a huge great big sheet of it uh-huh and what can i do natalie if i find my paste is uh sticking so if you're sticking then you can use a bit of corn flour um i don't know if anyone can hear that but it's chris in the background laughing at us because because i need to try and remember all the questions that i asked last time when they were really natural i monumentally failed at pressing record <laughs> so a little bit of corn flour on the back i tend to do my corn flour with a fluffy brush simply because i can control how much i'm putting on whereas my viewers will know that i love to just pack it on with a nice big 
corner towel puff like this one here, which doesn't really show up on film because it's very bright. Press firmly and give it a wiggle. And you want your paste to be able to move around like that because it means you're gonna get a nice clean cut. Oh my word, this one's really raggedy, Natalie. How raggedy? Oh, that'll be fine, honestly. It will be fine. Because your ball tool will get rid of a lot of that. You're gonna vein it as well, which will change it too. And then when we dust it, that will flick lots of those bits off. And if any of them are stuck, you can usually just kind of flick them off. Okay. Um, and also, you know, nature isn't perfect. I've heard you say that before, that could be a catchphrase. Nature isn't perfect. Yeah, it could be. Mm -hmm. It could be. So, I know where that's so right, but it's too thick. I'm going again. Okay, okay. So this particular version um, is a really quick one to make. So I'm not, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't worry about putting these um, in plastic or under a petal portfolio or anything. But while we wait for Rob to catch up, I will. Yeah. <laughs> Which will take no time at all because I'm a pro now. I'll swap back and then I can watch you properly. I can't believe I didn't press record. I'm just going to take my time. <laughs> Which means that because there's silence, I'm sitting here trying to think of what I can say because I feel compelled to fill the silence. Well, it's a bit awkward because I can't remember what we've already said and also of what we've already said, what we said when we were recording. I know. So yeah. you might have like passed on some incredibly life-changing yeah, yeah. thing. <laughs> If we don't remember to say it again, it will be forever lost for all time. I want to hear. Oh, why are you sticking again? I think the problem is, obviously, over time, it gets warm in here because of all the lights and everything. And so my paste is getting stickier as I'm using so, it. You know what? We're going to dust it at the end. So just go heavy on the corn flour. If it sort of colours the paste, it doesn't matter because we'll dust it off. And you can steam flowers, can't you? Like, like I'm, again... Regular viewers would have seen me steam my cakes before. I um, I tend not to steam the flowers, which is just, it's it's nothing more than personal preference. I quite like how they look when they are a little bit soft and dustier and they've not got that kind of shine to them from being steamed. Uh -huh. um, but it's, it's nothing more than personal preference. There's no special reason why I do or don't do it. But that is one that's often a bit controversial because everyone's like, you don't steam your flowers? What? Like, well, no. <laughs> As yet, I have not been arrested by the flower police for not stealing them. There's a first time for everything. Well, I'll tell you what, while I'm finishing up, why don't you tell us how you came up with the idea for your rapid rose? Well, 2016, which feels like a really long time ago now. And uh, just as a result of making a lot of wedding cakes with a lot of roses, roses are still without doubt one of the most popular flowers for weddings and stuff and um, so it was just about looking for a quick efficient way to do it that was also consistent and um, so that with a little bit of practice you can kind of batch your jobs and churn them out and they will be consistent economic to make because they're quick and um, you can do a decent profit on them as well because you're not spending hours and hours and hours of your time making them um, and thus the rapid rose was born and it's all sort of grown from there really and now, of course, you have obviously lots of extra different kind of accoutrement, as they say, so like your rolling pins and your veining tools and your brushes and your colours and your dusts and obviously the books. And the books. Quite the entrepreneur. It is. Yeah, it's been, it's been a busy few years. Busy few years. <laughs> and I think having seen you in action at the shows and seeing the response that you get from the public, other people enjoy it too. Apparently so. So I keep looking at you like that because I'm like, he could say anything next. He no... really could. I know all her secrets, everyone. Head to the comments if you'd like to know them. <laughs> yeah, no, we do we do enjoy it. And I do, do you know, actually, I do miss the shows as well. I miss getting out and about and seeing people. But this is the next best, best thing, I thank goodness, for Zoom and technology and all of that jazz. Because I think you said this on a bit that we did record, that this has been in the making for the best part of a year we've been planning to do this. Yes, absolutely. We um, well, we, we talked about doing it in person, didn't we? I even bought a second chair for the studio. Well, one day, in person, we will do it. And then you can take me to the seaside as well. Yes. Okay, our next task here is we want to add the veins. So I have got a um, gem veining stick, which, as you can see, it's got these grooves on it. 
and it's tapered which means it will move in a nice arc which will give us the sort of the right shape of the veins you have a slightly different one don't you yeah I, I don't have one of those and I did order one but unfortunately it hasn't arrived in time for filming so I found in the PME miniature tools kit a tool that you probably can't see I might drop an image over the top of this when I'm editing um, and it's not quite the same but it should give me some texture give you hopefully. Some and I find when doing this and it will probably be the same with that one it is much easier if you start in the middle of the rose petal and come down and then go back to the middle and go up because sometimes when you start at the edges what happens <laughs> you won't do it now just because I'm trying to explain but what happens is that the whole thing curls up around the tool so sort of middle down and then middle up and like you can be fairly rough with it flower paste is tougher than you think I'm glad you said that <laughs> and you can see that you get like it widens the petals gives them a little bit of shape I'm just going to pop that onto my petal pad and do my second one there. I always find if I'm doing this on lots of them, it hurts your fingers. And you sit there and you go, oh, God, why does it hurt? Because it hurts across your knuckles where the bones are as you're rolling. And then it, always, it takes me a little while to work out what it is that I've been doing that has made it hurt. Any sympathy there? No? None? Um, loads. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of I'm still yeah. refining my technique. Sorry. So mine isn't tapered, you see, so I'm, I'm having to kind of bodge it slightly. Uh, I see. I see. This is the thing. Yeah, sometimes you just have to get inventive and use what you've got, right? I'm a huge fan of just finding things and thinking, oh, that would be good for cake. Mm hmm Definitely. I'm watching again, just by the way. They look nothing alike, but that's fine. Look how zen I am about it, because it's attempt number two. Yeah. What is it? We have the our three Ps of practice patience and perseverance that's what i like to say to people it takes a little while to learn anything new right okay so swap over it's really weird i know you're a teacher and i'm still here, like going into teacher mode at you it makes me feel really strange obviously but as a teacher i consider myself a lifelong learner <laughs> that used to be the motto at one of my old schools so that's what everyone should be learn something new every day as they say so you just can take your ball tool and just come around the edge of those petals you don't want to make it super frilly you're just looking for a nice soft undulation with a wave in it. Undulation, that's a big word. A good word. And we're going to do that to both of them. Because by prepping both at the same time, it means that whilst we are working and attaching the first one, the second one can sit and dry up a little bit and it's going to make it easier to attach it afterwards because it's not going to be too floppy. And yeah, undulation is a nice word, and it always makes people g giggle. Really? Yeah, I don't know why, but it's, it's part of the official, the official sort of demonstration patter, if you like. And um, yeah, people always giggle at undulation. How are you doing? We're getting there. I definitely think that these look better than my first attempt that we shall not speak of. And what we can do, actually, the benefit of having me do two, is we can show people the difference. Mm -hmm. So literally, well, hopefully, if there's an improvement between <laughs> the two. I'm obsessively looking at the screen now and making sure that I have actually pressed record. You have, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. It does tell me as well, to be fair, and I didn't notice. Well, you didn't tell me that before, did you? Yeah, it says recording, and then it says you're in the recording. <laughs> Time for the rapid rose pad. This is the little green thing that makes it all work. You're going to take your first set of petals and then turn it upside down onto the rapid rose pad. And the reason you're always turning them upside down with the roses is because when you do the ball tool you make the petals curl towards you when they're on the rose you want them to curl away from the center so by flipping it it means that you're going to get that sort of natural curl away um, which helps with the shape and we'll do water in the center and a little line on each edge of the petal so where can i get one of these swanky water pens if i want to buy one rather than being sent one by my very good friend um, so we have them uh, we have them for sale on our website as well, which is immaculateconfections.co.uk, along with, um, like we said, all the books, the colours, the flower making equipment, um, various things. It keeps growing. So it's kind okay. of like that. You can see where so I can find the light this time because I wasn't able to last time. Oh, oh! I can see it. A little sparkle. There we go. And then pop our polybud through the centre. 
and you're right-handed. We've already had <laughs> this is weird. This is a sense of deja vu going on here. So I'm right-handed too. That means that our roses will spiral clockwise. Um, if you're left-handed, they go the other way, which I can question. do. Now I didn't ask this last time, but question. Yeah. Is there a way in nature that rose petals spiral or do they go both ways? No idea. I've never looked. Oh. I've never even thought to look actually for all the time I've done this. I've never thought I'm going to go and I will, I will find out. You think I'm not going to Google it in a second? Well, all that, all that. Um, so start with taking the water pen and just wetting the bud there. Because that's just going to help us attach those first petals. And this is this is a slightly different method than how I normally do it. This way is even quicker than like the normal rapid rose, if anyone's seen that before. It's just like the idiot proof method for me. No, not at all. It's just a different style. Different style. We were saying that just now, weren't we? That sort of same same bits of kit, same equipment, but doing something slightly different with it. Pick a petal, lift it up and attach one side. So as you look at it, it's the left hand side that you've attached just there to create a little like a little open wing turn it round 180 degrees take an opposite petal and again attach that left hand side so you can see there if I put my finger there you've kind of got a straight line two two little wings and then you will take the open side of one of the petals and curl it round on top of his neighbor and then the next one comes round as well so then we have our inner two petals that make a nice little spiral in the middle there and interlink that is it perfect we can use a pokey tool if we need to to just get the inside of the petal of both of them nice and tight to that cone and by a pokey tool you mean the the kind of the thicker edge of a pme dresden tool the spoon end of a dresden tool yes Sorry. And then with your fingers, we can just curl that outside edge back a little bit. Oh, and actually I have split my petal there, but I'm not going to worry about that at all. Because that can happen in nature. Absolutely. And now because of the light and because it's a bit warm, stuff tends to dry out. So if you need to, you can pop a little bit of extra water on the remaining petals. And then what we will do for this row, again, start with one and attach that left hand side. Spin it round a little bit and do the same for the next one. Spin it round again and do the same thing. So now we have got three petals sticking out. Um, you'll find sometimes they'll sit really nicely in their third. Sometimes you need to move one a bit to the left or the right so they're kind of equidistant, but that's mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> And then we'll do the same thing again. Take the petal and close it up. That's it. And then before you do anything else, if you remove it off the rapid rose pad and turn it over, you can press down the back there and just make sure that you're only pressing where the polystyrene ball is. Don't touch the top of the petals at this stage. It's just that bit. The polystyrene ball's nice and strong. It's not coming off the stick or whatever, and that's going to like give them enough strength. And then at the top here, each petal's got like an inside and an outside edge. Mm -hmm. And you just want to curl back those outside edges. Just it's kind of like, almost like that. Yep, yeah, that's it. Because if you think, and this is going to this is going to sound really condescending, but it isn't meant to in the slightest. Well, let's also remember that last time I did this bit wrong, that they well, don't know about. It's just when when you have, if you think when they're opening, the outside edge is the bit that will open first because the other edge can't because it's trapped by the next petal along. So it is always that open edge that you want to get nice and open. Um, and then of course we can go with our pokey tool, and just poke, prod, rearrange as necessary so that our petals are in a, a nice shape. And the most important thing is that you want to make sure that you've got plenty of gaps in between the petals and the rows of petals because it's the gaps that make it look open and make it look realistic. So let's have a little look. Perfect. That's it, that's super. Absolutely super. So we can pop him to one side into the polystyrene Stop playing with it. Sorry. 
And then we'll take our next set of petals again upside down onto our rapid rose pad, water in the center and a little line up the edge of each petal. And if you prefer, you can do this with glue, but whether you do glue or water, make sure you're not using too much because you want it to be like sticky and tacky so that they stay put. You don't want it to be so wet that it sort of slips about. I'll be honest, I usually am a glue person, but I do find for flowers that glue, as you say, is too wet and too slippery. So if people haven't done it before, speaking as a essentially a beginner, I do find the water is easier. Cool. Right, rosebud through the middle. And actually, this is a good opportunity to say that if you only wanted a very small rose or just a bud, you can stop at this stage and that would be it. But we are gonna make this one a bit bigger. So through the center again, and then it's very, very similar. We will start with a petal and attach that. Does it matter which petal? No, any one of them will do because we're just going to work sequentially and form a spiral with all five of them as we go round. Oh, and another question actually, which I didn't ask last time and I kind of assumed, but when you stick that first side, are you putting it vertically rather than at the angle it is at, if that makes sense? So if I come up to the camera a bit more, are you basically putting that side vertical? You know what? My one is about half and half. Okay. So it's more vertical than just lifting it up, but it's not completely vertical. Cool. So we'll take the next petal and do the same thing of attaching that one side. And then straight away, the open side from our first petal will go on top. So it's the same procedure we did before, but instead of getting all five of them standing up with just the one side, we're just going to kind of go around in sequence. So we'll do the next one. And then again, that bit comes on top and the next one and that bit comes on top and then finally the last one that bit comes on top and if we've done it right then your last open side will sit on the very first side that you attached from the first petal which I can see that you have and then again to turn it over and press down the base and with this, again, super, super important that you're only pressing where the ball is. Don't squash the petals. And then when he's the right way up again, you can curl back those outer edges. And it is just that outside edge. So that in curling it, you kind of create that, you know how rose petals have a bit of a point in the middle of the petal? Mm -hmm. That's sort of what you're creating by curling back the, the open side of them. If you find that they're a bit floppy or it doesn't want to stick, again, take the fat end of your Dresden tool and we can slip it just inside and press the inside edge of each petal onto the bud and onto the polystyrene. And again, curl the outside bit. And then remember, so I'm gonna do a couple of like top tips here because so this is the conversation Rob and I had shortly before I realised I hadn't been recording. Um, when you look at the petals just here, can you see that from the base there to the tip, it's almost a straight line? That's what you want to create, because if that bit is nearly a straight line, you will have, let's pop that out there, you will have these gaps. And the gaps are so, so, so important. Um, really important. Should I do the weird thing with my hands again? Did that help? I can't remember what the weird thing with your hands was. Oh yeah, definitely <laughs> do it. <laughs> right, so the best way I've found to explain this, although I realise I look a little bit peculiar doing it, is that if you imagine this to be your rosebud, as the petals open, they move to this position, then that position and that position. So they're anchored at the base of the bud there. What doesn't ever happen is that they open and then bend back. So that's the thing you need to make sure not to do because quite often when people start making roses, to make them look more open, they'll have the petals here and they bend them back. So don't bend them in the middle. Oh, where's my hand? There we are. That's me. I do that. <laughs> get your Dresden tool in and open the petal out from right at the bottom so that you get that shape instead of that sort of weird up and then bent back thing. Um, which... 
I am now desperate to see. Let's have a look at what you've got because this is number two. Okay, okay I've got some floppiness, but. Oh, that's brilliant. See how, how much okay. opener it is and everything. And I can show you people because, again, I know my camera quality isn't great, guys. So, what I might do is do it down here on my camera. This one, are you going to focus on this one? There we go. This one was the first attempt, and this one was the second attempt. And already, I'm really pleased with them. I think that this one looks infinitely better. I mean, this one's fine. You know, it's a passable rose. But again, I will show Natalie. Yeah, so way better. That, that's the first one. That's the second one. And already, this one has that kind of fluidity that you want from flowers, doesn't it? And it's just, it's just practice. And it's practice of getting to know the flower paste. It's practice of getting to know how strong it is and where it will stay put and like having the confidence to let the petals be that open and, and knowing that they're not just gonna fall off. Um, so all of those things, the more you do it, it is super important. And um, with these, sometimes if they're being a bit floppy, then you can dry them upside down. If everything is staying put, dry it right way up. Or sometimes what I will do is a little bit of both where I will pop it upside down to begin with and then maybe 10, 15 minutes later, I'll take it down, have a look give it another poke and a prod if needs be um, and set it the right way up to finish drying. And that is it. So it was pretty quick, eh? It really was. And actually, Even doing it um, just going from attempt number one to attempt number two, I don't know if people notice actually watching me, but I kind of, there were a couple of times that I pressed on a head mm -hmm. rather than kind of hanging on your every word just because I was feeling that much more confident and having it's 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 weird to say, but actually knowing that this video is now going to be there, oh, I can yeah, almost just yeah. have you there again and again and again until I get really confident with them. But that's it. But my own little personal rose making tutor, and obviously all of yours as well. <laughs> if you and on that note, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. Oh, I can but, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, is that what we um, said? No? We said um, give it a thumbs up which is just the video. And then it's uh, subscribe and ring the bell here on YouTube. Okay, so subscribe, for those of you who don't know, if you subscribe, it means that essentially in your subscription list, my videos will come up. And if you ring the bell, it means you'll get an email essentially saying, Rob's uploaded a new video. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't YouTube. You should use YouTube. I, you do all those amazing live videos. Sorry, I'm talking to <laughs> and the camera but you do all those amazing live videos which you could then put on youtube as well so those of us here who well, i use facebook but people who don't use facebook could enjoy them on youtube and i can see there's a look there between <laughs> natalie and, her and chris who by the way if you don't know natalie natalie and chris are kind of say hello Hi. yeah he, he's always there in the background whether it's at the shows or on their videos and i could see there was a look there of this is another job that we have to do <laughs> One day. One day. One. How do you feel about leaves, Robert? Um, I feel better about leaves than I do about being called Robert. Okay. Nat. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, truth on that front. Cool. So we've done our roses. We can make some leaves for them. So I have some um, some nice dark green flower paste and with the, the leaf green food colouring. And if I swap over, I will show you how. Um. So I have a rose leaf cutter, rose leaf veiner, and these are both FMM ones. They are basic, but they do the job. If you've got something different, then of course you can use that. And to begin with, I'm just gonna roll the flower paste out. Again, same sort of thinness, like at most a millimeter or a little bit thinner than that. So that we've got, um, you know, it's not so thin it will disintegrate, but it's thin enough that it will look delicate, basically. And then I think three leaves should do us. If you just cut out three little leaves. One. Two. That'll do. That'll do. And then smush up your excess and pop it to one side because we are going to use that for something else in just a moment. Okay, um, I didn't roll out very much green, so just bear with. I need to roll out some more to cut some more leaves. That's fine. I cut out enough for one. <laughs> I learned my lesson from last time, you see. I was being more 
dainty. Leaves leaves are hardier than petals and stuff, so you can yes. And we're gonna we'll we'll attach them with um, a wire on the back with a little twiddle of paste on it. Have you done? Why at all? Oh yeah, no, I'm absolutely not one of these people who is able to do the whole slide of, of wire inside something that's a millimeter so, thick. I'll show you something different then. We'll do it a different way. Uh, um, and for the viewer at home, you want to do this on like because we want the leaves to stand up nicely. So a 26 gauge wire would be perfect, um, or a 24. Can you um, very quickly, because no one ever has, explain what do the numbers mean? When it comes to wire the higher the number the thinner the wire isn't it which is completely counterintuitive and that's what i mean because like i never knew that for a long time um so 28 gauge is like a nice thin one that you would use for small leaves berries petals things like that um 26 gauge if you had something bigger so if we were doing like bigger leaves or whatever, then you'd want to use a, a 26 gauge for that. Like I said, 26 for these is perfect. Um, 24, I tend to use for like filler flowers and things because it's stiff enough to hold the weight, but not so stiff that it's hard to bend. And then anything thicker than that tends to be what you use to make your stem. So like with the, the roses, we've put those on a 20 gauge wire. So it's more than thick and strong enough to hold up the weight of the rose. Okay, and how long have you cut those pieces of wire for the leaves? Um, it's about a quarter length, so about 10 centimetres ish. That's it. I just I happen to have some in the packet that were already cut. Does it matter what colour we've got? Because I've got black. No, we can tape over it. I've got green ones. But if you've got white, you could use that and we'll tape it at the end. So if you pop your leaves on your petal pad, grab the veiner and if you need to, just dab a little corn flour on it just so that it doesn't stick line it up so that you've got the you know the way and just give it a good firm press and are you putting it so that the the kind of so if that's my leaf are you putting your leaf lining up at the bottom yeah okay asking the dumb questions so you don't have to that's all right you don't know what you don't know i do like a vein now it's a good shortcut for people like me who are quite clueless about making things like leaves and things because it makes them look really realistic. True, very true. And okay, then... and then are you ball tooling the edges again? Yes, so just a little bit. And the trick with leaves is to always go sort of bottom to top, follow the way that the leaf grows so that you are stretching and elongating it in the right direction. She says bottom to top, but she does it the other way around. But I did notice that. <laughs> and then do you see it just gives them this nice little again not really frilly but there's a bit of shape there mm -hmm. this thing with leaves it's much nicer if they have a little bit of movement in them because otherwise if they're dead flat they just end up looking like semaphore flags and it's just a bit like it's more interesting if they have some some shape and then finally what we're going to do is grab a little bit of your flower paste that was left over and just make sure that it is well kneaded and super sort of pliable and warmed up. Make a little sausage, like so. Take a piece of wire and you can either dip it in a bit of glue or wet it slightly. And whichever I do, I always tend to just dab it on the back of my hand so it's not swimming. You're gonna stick the wire in the sausage. You don't need to be too precise about it because then what you're going to do is twist and twiddle the paste onto the wire so that you've got a nice neat little shaft of flower paste on there. And the one thing that can be really handy in doing this is a little bit of Trex or Petal Base. So it's just a white veggie fat just on your fingertips so that it doesn't stick to you. And the trick, and the trick to doing this is, hang on, let me wet the wire, so you're making that really thin? Yeah. And what I tend to do is I'll, I'll, so we've got it in there. This hand holds the wire and it's holding it. It's firm enough that as I twist, the wire's not moving up and down like that. But it's also loose enough that as I twist, I can spin it. And then you can just sort of pinch and roll your fingers up and down and you should get this lovely thin sausage on it. 
How is that going for you? Um, mine might be a bit too big. That's fine. That is that. That will be fine. Again, this is definitely a technique. The more you do it, it, it refines itself. Um, and you want the bit of paste to be sort of a half to two thirds the length of your leaf. If you don't get on with doing it with your hands, there is another way that you can do this. So again, we've wetted the wire, stick it in the sausage, and then you can roll it on the petal pad. Oh yeah, I'd like that more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, you know, it's the same with, like, with anything cakey, crafty, arty, whatever. There's always more than one way to do a thing. So if, if one way... Again, if you've got really hot hands like I have, mm -hmm. anything that reduces the amount you are touching is a surefire win. Again, people would have seen me when I make, in my tutorials, whenever we're rolling out things like sausages and what have you, I will use a uh, smoother so that I'm not touching it myself. Whereas me, I am the ice queen, <laughs> so I can do things with my hands. I'm absolutely jealous of all people with cold hands. <laughs> okay, so we're now looking like that. Perfect. Yeah? Cool. But I need to do that three more times. And then once you've done that, you need to pop a little bit of water all glue. <laughs> Position your leaf on top. And then what I tend to do is I use the side of my little finger to just press it down. And then once that has dried, that leaf won't be going anywhere. A little bit of water or glue, like I said, either, whichever you have got, I prefer. And then we'll just press that down. And the thing is, right, this isn't, so you wouldn't want to do this um, for a competition, because that's something that folk always ask as well. And then you'd want to roll everything out properly with a veining board um, and insert the wire into each one. But for just for fun or indeed for commercial work, then this is absolutely a suitable technique. Do you find that competition, they tend to prefer the more, again, botanically accurate finish? Because I mean, I know you've done really well in competitions. Well, if you're doing, I think if you're doing flower categories, then yes, I, I believe what they're always looking for is the botanical side of things. So I've never entered flowers into a flower class. I've always done wedding cakes where there is as much emphasis on the design and the colours and all the rest of it as what there is on the flowers or anything like that. You don't really need botanical ones for wedding. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've even done flowers on um, competition pieces before. I did uh, my sculpted pug in the palm pot. And of mm -hmm. course, he was surrounded by flowers, including roses. We won't talk about those too much. But um, again, obviously, they weren't botanically correct at all. This is it. Um, flowers for different purposes. And actually, I would think that I, I think that the making flowers to go on cakes commercially, which is what I do, is a different skill and a different um, you're looking for a different set of outcomes than making flowers for the sake of making flowers and for the joy of making them look completely real. They're two different, mm -hmm. much like with modelling, there are people that will model people who are perfect little statuettes of the person. But then there's also folk that will do them with a, a, a caricature-ish or a slightly cartoonish look or something. They're, it's not that one's right or wrong, they're just different. Well, absolutely. And when it comes to like my sculpted cakes, if I'm doing a sculpted cake for a, a person who, you know, like for a, because I don't sell cakes, but if I'm doing it for like a birthday cake for a, a godchild or something, I'm going to make it in a day. If I'm doing it for, you know, a tutorial or a competition, I'm going to make it in a week. So, Definitely. right. Okay, so I've got my wires and they are covered. And I know you did already go through this. Hold it down on there. Yeah, let's pull this one off. So just hold it on, hold it down, pop a little bit of water or glue where the paste is. And then you're just gonna plop the leaf on top and press it down. And I tend to press things like this with the side of my little finger, like that. So that you just get a nice even pressure as opposed to like, digging into it with your sort of fingertip or anything. And if you wish, you can give them a little pinch at the base, but it's up to you. And then the most fun bit when we've done this is we can play with petal dusts, which is my <sighs> personal obsession, <laughs> always. So much so you made your own. Absolutely. I made an extra leaf in case I ruined one, but I don't think I'm gonna need it. <laughs> Bears are always good. Bears are always good because you never know. Oh yeah, whenever I make flowers normally, 
because I'm so clumsy. I literally, I can't emphasize to people enough how clumsy I am. I will make tons of extras because, I mean, again, going back to the pug in the flower pot, I'm, I think there were maybe seven roses on that in total. I made 16. Oh, wow. <laughs> you spare. And then you can give them a little twist or a little bit of shape and pop them down to dry. Just so that they're not flat. And if you want, sometimes I'll stick them on um, flower drying foam, you know, the bobbly stuff to dry. The stuff. That stuff. Yes, precisely. So now we can do the fun bit, which is uh, dusting everything, which is definitely okay. the fun bit. So um, I've got some ruby red, some burgundy um, to do the rose. We may also use a little bit of black. Okay, and, then... and these are your colours, aren't they? So immaculate confection, edible, pastel dust. They are indeed. <laughs> Look like this. Again, this camera doesn't auto-focus, I don't think, like my normal one. That's all right. Um, and then on the leaves, we've got some deep green and some teal, which we'll use together to um, to dust up the leaves nice and dark. So Okay. And then brush-wise, what do you recommend? So um, we do sell brushes. Um, and I've got, I'm going to use a relatively small one for the rose. Did we send I have got, oh, I've got quite a few. Oh, you also sent me wire. After all that, I've only got white. There was wire in here, but never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've got these four brushes. So use the one on your right. Yeah. For the rose. For the rose. And then the one on the left, we can use for the leaves. That one. Cool. So I always do my dust on a bit of kitchen paper and that is partly because it saves a little bit of mess and then also because it just gives a really nice surface to sort of work from. With dust you can always add more but you can't take it away so go easy, don't add too much because you can always layer up the colour and have some more if you need to. And we're going to start with the ruby and what I always do is pick some out of the pot, plop it on the paper and then it's like it's almost like you're trying to rub it into the kitchen towel. And the reason for that is so that the dust ends up in the bristles instead of on the bristles. If you dip it straight in the pot, you're going to pick up huge clumps of colour that are going to go all streaky and all over the place when you then try and dust with it. So if you've got your rose, um, so these, they have, they're more or less dry, but we do need to be a bit careful with them still. Under normal circumstances, you'd leave it a good few hours, if not overnight, to dry. And we're just going to pick up some of that lovely colour there and... Just coming from the edges in, just flick it onto the petals. And it's just from the edges towards the centre to begin with. And I will do the outside row first and then we'll do the inside row. And can you see that it's sort of lots of small repetitive brush strokes because it's the, the repetition that blends the colour as you add it. And again, like I said, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. And I can do those inner petals as well. And at this stage, you may well notice that the colour isn't, it's not making a dramatic difference, but it does make a difference because dusts will always, they retain their brightness in a way that quite often with the flower paste, once it just dries, it becomes a little bit lacklustre. It goes a, a, a couple of shades lighter than what it was when it was, it was fresh. So quite often starting off with a layer of a similar colour to just invigorate and brighten the, the flower will help. Okay, mine is, yeah, you're right. It is still quite soft, so. See, this is where the clumsiness and ham-fistedness <laughs> come in. You just need to be gentle with it if it's still a bit soft. But like we said, you normally you'd leave them to dry um, a good while longer. Which again is another one of those things. I know sometimes people will um, dust things while they're still wet. So it's just a different way of doing it. More often than not, I tend to wait until stuff's dry to dust it. But that's mostly personal preference than anything else again. That's it. And that should be where you add some cornflower marks in there as well. That should be good. Yeah. Super. Super. Cool. All right. So the next step is we will take a little bit of the burgundy. And again, we're picking up just a little bit with the brush. And that we want to put just on the edges. 
And again, it's those gentle brush strokes from the outside coming in just to darken the edges of the petals there. So with this, remember that we are not looking to like change the color of the rose. You're enhancing the color of it rather than, so you don't want to be coating the whole thing with the burgundy. It's just on those edges coming in, which darkens them up a little bit. We're very quiet. I know, we need to say something. It's all the concentration of the dusting, I think. This honestly is my favorite part. Like petal dust will absolutely completely and totally transform your work. Getting good at dusting, if, if flowers is your thing and that's what you want to learn to do, getting good at dusting will have the biggest impact on how things look. Totally brings stuff to life and you can do such cool effects with getting sort of gradient colours. Um, so that one, it's the same style as the one we've done, but in a pale yellow and with those pink edges, which is all the petal dust. I think, yeah, definitely. I could see how this would be so much easier if it was dry. I do also think that my non-veining veining tool has made my paste very thin as well, so it's making it quite tricky to dust without distorting the rose. But I definitely get the the technique. And actually, for the benefit of the camera, I just had a delivery, and um, there's my veining tool. Never mind. It'll be there for next time. It will be there for next time. Now, there's one last little thing that we can do here with our red, red rose. Yeah, we're gonna add a tiny bit of black. Oh. Right, everybody reacts like that, always. So with this, you just want the teeniest, tiniest amount on your brush, right? A super, super, super tiny bit. So can you see the extent to which, like this can color? I record for the benefit of people watching, I never use black, ever, on anything. Like yeah. whenever I do shading on models and things, it's brown doing this because it always surprises people. So you just I'm want gonna a be brave. teeny tiny bit. And then we're going to come with the most small and gentle brush strokes just on the very, very, very tip of the petals. And it's just going to darken them ever so slightly, which is going to give us a gorgeous depth to the colouring as well as helping to produce that sort of velvety kind of valentine's -y look mm -hmm. and the trick is to just be using it honestly the smallest amount a smidgen because and forgive me for saying it again you can always add more but you can't take it away so it's just on the edges and then what we'll do our very last step with this once we've added that little bit of black down there is that if you feel in any places that the black is a bit harsh, go back, pick up a little bit more of your ruby red. And then you can just dust over again with that and it will just soften the black slightly, help it to blend. Are you dusting the one that you made first time as well so it's really dry? Yes. <gasps> but that's the difference. No wonder I'm struggling with how soft my is. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Right, you heard it here, guys. I've been sabotaged. Well, why, why wouldn't I have done that? I'll dust the other one if you want. It's pretty dry too. No, it's fine. You can see the difference that the dust makes there. And I, well, rather, I hope it shows up to you in a minute. It does, absolutely. I think your camera that you're using is better than the one I'm using. So when you're showing things on camera, it's definitely looking clearer. And in fact, again, people watching, we're not using my usual filming setup because, as I say, we're streaming. Natalie's got this really posh software, so we're streaming to her. Easiest way to get us both on at the once, wasn't it? Without... Absolutely. So that was it. So now we can do our leaves, and leave, leaves are much easier to dust when they are still not the driest. Much easier. So for these, we're going to use a little bit of the teal and a little bit of the deep green. Okay, I'm just going to put lids on colours first because oh, I... I know. <laughs> I like to tempt, tempt fate, and you know, they made a nice pattern. They do. Um, the Hungry Caterpillar. It's a very um, effective image, I have to say. But also your pots aren't full to the brim is the other thing. Yeah, true. <laughs> okay. Very true. So, the deep green, but then just a little bit of the teal, because you know how, um, again, thinking traditional Valentine's-y rose, 
the, the leaves do have that really rich quality to them. They are on the dark side. So a little bit of the deep green, bit of teal mixed in. And then for these, we're just going to come from the edge of the leaf towards the centre. Again, fairly small brush strokes and repetitive so that it's blending at the same time. And it's always from the edge towards the middle on the one side and then the edge towards the middle on the other side. Um, I, don't, I don't bother dusting the back, people like to ask that as well, something I rarely do because nobody's looking at the back. And again you can see there the difference that those dusts make. Um, sorry, I'm just really keen about petal dusts. <laughs> Well, actually, in all seriousness, I was always very anti-dust because I I airbrushed my first ever decorated cake. So I, I've been decorating cakes for, what, six and a half years now? And I've been airbrushing for six and a half years. And so for me, dusting is so time consuming and laborious and stuff. But I have to say, this last year, I've really started getting into dusting. And I can totally see the attraction now. See, I, I was the opposite. I, I was slow to come to airbrushing. So I have, um, so in the past, um, used to do the occasional sort of sculpted novelty cake or whatever it was. My favourite one was um, an alien egg with like a face hugger bursting out of it. It in coloured and stuff. And that was all done with dust because I couldn't get my head around at the time. I didn't have an airbrush, but that was because I'd always done the dusting with the flowers, that's kind of my go-to means of adding colour. But I mean, both work, right? So, again, it's, just, it's another example. It's not a right and wrong thing. It's a different thing. Absolutely. And I mean, for me, what I have enjoyed about dust this year is, um, is the ability to be really subtle and nuanced mm -hmm. with the use of colour, which I know you can do with an airbrush. But again, if you're creating a tutorial for other people who perhaps aren't as confident, subtle and nuanced and airbrushing don't really go together. No, <laughs> no. Certainly not when you're starting with it, that's for sure. No, definitely not. Okay, leaves done. Final flourish on the leaves is... It's not black, is it? No, no, just a little no. tiny bit of red. Just very gently, not all the way around and not in the same place on each leaf but just a little bit here and there, and it is just going to give you that slightly, um, you know, like how rose leaves when they start to die and they go a bit dead and crispy around the edge. Mm -hmm. How romantic. Exactly. Exactly. And actually, I was a little heavy-handed there, so let me just blend that back in with some green. So these are really dark leaves, so it's not showing up enormously, but if you do it on a slightly paler shade, then you can really see it, and it does look nice. Mm -hmm. I get, I absolutely get the effect we're going for. Again, I think I've been very handed with the, heavy handed with the green anyway. But you can, yeah, I can totally see the effect it's creating. And then our final step, we need the old floral tape, which you have some of, and I sent you some. I just panicked when I filled that box and put everything in it. Except for <laughs> one thing. a painting stick. Or a rolling pin. Or a rolling pin. Should we tell the rolling pin story? You can tell the rolling pin story, Rob. I wouldn't want to deny you the pleasure of recounting <laughs> the story so, again. Uh, uh, again, this is what, the third time in a couple of weeks? At least. So at the, I, I swear, was it Germany? Or was it one of the London CIs? At a cake show in the past, possibly about two years ago, I took a shine to one of Natalie's rolling pins. Natalie, could you demonstrate your beautiful rolling pin? And what I like about Natalie's rolling pin is it has curved edges, which means you can use it as a ball tool, essentially negating the need for a separate tool. And as Natalie and I both said earlier, it's always nice to have tools that do multiple things. And also um, nine inches long, not six, which means you can get both of your hands on it comfortably to roll it out. And so I tried to buy one of Natalie's lovely rolling pins, but Natalie only had one left on her stand and told me not to buy it, stay fit for a real customer and she would send me one now natalie has very kindly sent me things in the intervening two years and i have seen natalie on many occasions in the intervening two years i do not still have a rolling pin which had i just been allowed to buy one two years ago <laughs> would have been fine so it's the point we're out of spite 
I don't know if I send you one <laughs> or not. I'm just going to buy one from your website under a false name so you don't know it's me. That's absolutely the way for it. Okay, so I love that we use the kitchen roll to stop making a mess with the dust. Yes. Do you have any tips for people who still make a mess with the dust anyway? I think possibly the technique you were using was you were holding it very low, weren't you, to the table? Oh, I, yeah, if not like on the table, as opposed yes. to doing it like this and flicking it all over the place. That would like make it <laughs> That would make a so that's a tip that you It's funny, isn't it? All the things you do that you don't realise you do until someone's like, well, why are you mm -hmm. holding it? That's, that, pardon? It just went until someone asks. Yeah. Well, again, that's one of the benefits of doing videos like this is people can learn from my mistakes. That's the only reason why I'm doing them, obviously, is purely because they're teachable moments. Okay, so talk us through florist tape for the people who don't know florist tape. So florist tape is, it is paper. It is crimped up so that you can stretch it out within the crimps is um a sort of waxy substance that it, it's not sticky like sellotape but it is tacky with itself and um, so when you've stretched it and as you touch it the wax warms up and it will stick to itself and that's what you use to tape leaves together to tape leaves onto stem or something like that um it tends to come in these rolls that are about half an inch wide so the first thing we're going to do actually is cut it down slightly a little trick for doing that which is if you cut off a length wrap it round three of your fingers like so you can then off your fingers and just run the scissors up and it's just that's much quicker than sitting there trying to like cut all the way up because i've seen people with like these posh tools but they seem to mangle it somewhat, almost. Um, I do I do have one of those. So we, we refer to that as the yellow box of doom. Within the box, the thing that does the cutting, it helps if you try and open it the right way, um, is razor blades. And it frightens the life out of me. So I do use it, but it is a bit scary. And if you have to take it apart to clean it, it's even more scary because they're actual razor blades. So if you have one of those, do be careful. Because, and I have told, I must have told this story about a thousand times, first time I taught a class, was it first time? No, it was one of the first times, a good few years ago, um, and one of the students was using it, and the tape got stuck, so she put a finger in it and just sliced, you know, like the soft pad on the top of your finger, right, and every time I talk about it, I make that face, which is why Yellow Box of Doom, ever since then. I like your technique more, thank you very much for showing me that, we'll be using that from now on. So the first thing we can do is, and you can definitely do this because you use the black wire, is just tape up the stem of your leaves. Um, and to be honest, I've done it on this one. On my other ones, because it is uh, they're dark leaves and I use the dark green wire, I don't particularly think, I don't know, what do you think, Rob? Is there much a difference between this one that I've taped and this one that I haven't? I don't want to say corners. Well, where that I've taped leaves before sorry I've taped things before other people might not have done so should we talk very quickly what you just did there because it was essentially sorcery <laughs> sorry <laughs> right so part of the reason for trimming the tape down is because if you have skinny little wires like this wrapping around a piece of tape that is that thick is really difficult which is why one will often use half width or even quarter width tape I find the easiest way to attach it, lay the tape over the wire like this, with your other hand I sort of fold it underneath, that shows there, and then you can kind of pinch it with your fingers, wrap it round the long way once or twice so that it is attached, and then at that point you can hold it and twist. And the trick with the twisting is that might as well tape up the last leaf now. So if your tape is at 90 degrees to the leaf and you twist, all that happens is that the tape rolls up on itself at exactly the same spot, which you don't want. So to get your tape to travel up or indeed down, you want it at about a 45 degree angle to the stem, because then when you twist, it will move up the wire and if you want it to come back down then you just change the angle so it's 45 degrees the other way and twist and the tape will then move down the stem. It's fiddly 
Um, it is definitely a thing that in classes and stuff, like everybody hates doing it to begin with because it is fit. But I can do it. Right. And if I can do it, seriously, I'm so ham fisted. So if I can do it, then anyone can do it. It just takes a little practice. So we can tape two of these together to make a little cluster of leaves. So what I've done is bent this one a little bit over to the left. The other one is bent a little bit to the right. And then we want to tape them together with one higher than the other. And it's for, just because it looks more interesting than if they're at the same level. So we have a little, what's the word? Brig. Brig, thank you. <laughs> and then you just hold the two wires together, wrap the tape around the both of them. And that is what is going to keep them attached. And that is basically the method you would use if you wanted to make an entire long branch or you were taping berries together, whatever. And it doesn't matter if they move, does it? Because you'll essentially position them. You can position them again afterwards. Because they're on the wires and they bend. You can reposition them however you like. I'm saying that because mine have twisted. So. <laughs> it's fine. Just be careful. So ours aren't entirely dry. If you wanted, if these were dry, don't hold it at the end to move it because you'll break the leaf. Either grip it at the bottom or indeed you can use a pair of um, little pliers or tweezers grab the wire and move the wire rather than using the sugar piece to do it. You take your rose, I because I'd bent the stem on my one, I'm going to straighten that out. And actually, do you have any 20 gauge wire? Established you did, didn't we? And I do. Yes, I do. Can I just say for the record, I bought all of this from Armatures. So it is purely coincidence that I have all these different wires. So if you just grab a bit and cut it in half. And when you get to the thicker stuff, it is best to use wire cutters, isn't it? Because otherwise you will destroy your scissors. Oh, I wouldn't cut wire with it. I wouldn't cut any wire. But yeah, you can get through that with it. This stuff's stiff. Yeah. Mm. Um, so with your rose, if we get the tape attached, just to the stem there and then with those two bits and this is simply to make the stem a little bit stronger and a little bit longer so I've literally here are my two new bits and just holding them alongside and I'm just going to wrap the tape around all three bits now because that's just going to reinforce um you could if you wish add a calyx to the back um I generally don't bother because um for, for something like this, granted you can see it, but usually if you're putting roses on a cake, you can't see the back of it. So it's just, it's not necessary because you can't see it. And more than that, if we're talking customer cakes, um, most customers wouldn't go looking for a calyx. They wouldn't know what a calyx is and they're not going to miss it. So my tape is about an inch beneath my rose. I'm going to take our leaves. And you just want to bend them back like so, so that they can sit alongside the stem. And again, you're just gonna hold them alongside your main stem and wrap the tape around both. And then just a little tiny way lower down, so that's not even half an inch there, we can add in our extra third leaf. So again, we'll bend it back on the wire about half an inch down from where the um, the leaf starts and it's nice if you put it on the opposite side and again hold it in place and just wrap that tape around now I've just run out of tape so I will grab my next bit actually I'll swap to my <clears throat> this is thick enough I can just use full width tape here And then just bring the tape all the way down. Round and round and round. Here we are. Oh no, I'm going to run out too. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. As I said, the dusting does leave something to be desired, but that's purely just because it wasn't quite dry enough very very wet here at the moment I don't know what it's like where you are but it is it's like raining hailstoning all sorts so it's so humid 
And the, do you know what? And this is the thing with sugar paste, whether we're talking a flour paste, like covering paste, modelling paste, whatever. The climate and how humid it is, how dry it is, how wet it is, all of those things affect it. So even with the best of intentions, sometimes things just don't <coughs> want because of the, the moisture in the air. And then as the final flourish, what I like to do is just bend the rose forward slightly. Which you can do with pliers if you want. It's just so that it's not on a straight stick. And then arrange the leaves. Because like everything has a front and a back, right? So that there is sort of my front. It's always a bit weird with the overhead camera. Just arrange the leaves nicely. And then that is your rose stem. Wipe the tech. Ta-da! What do you think? I think you've done tremendously well. You're looking, you're looking pleased with yourself. I really am. I hold something behind it so people can actually see properly. I think, it, I mean, it's it's obviously, it's not perfect, but I'm I, I pretty think... rather happy with that for my first ever freestanding wired leafed rose. Yeah, a little vase or something you can stick them in, or I quite like them. Um, if you get little, little tiny glass bottles from the supermarket, then that works as well for things. You can keep it. Oh, well, there you go, guys. That was how to create a wired, leaved, is it leaved a word? It is. A it? wired, leaved Valentine's rose with Natalie Porter from Immaculate Confection. So I'm going to give you a clap on behalf of everybody watching. If you would be interested in finding out more about Natalie Porter and Immaculate Confections, you can visit her website, which is www.immaculateconfections.co.uk and of course there you can find out about all the information on Natalie's upcoming classes which are of course are all online at the moment and find her online shop where you can buy her gel colours, her dust colours, her brushes, her rolling pins, her books, everything and of course why not head over to Facebook as well I'll put her links down in the video description so you can head over there and get involved in her weekly live demonstrations every Sunday night at eight o'clock I believe it is indeed Sunday at eight o'clock if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed to Mr Baker's Cakes here on YouTube you can do that now by hitting the big red button if you are already subscribed, don't forget you can also ring the bell to make sure you get a notification every time I upload a new video. Once again, thank you so much, Natalie, for joining us today and for giving up your time to show us how to make this beautiful, beautiful Valentine's project. I'm definitely going to have a go at making some more of these, especially now my veining tool has arrived. And I hope we'll be able to convince you to come back and join us in the Mr. Baker's Cakes kitchen again soon, perhaps to show us something a little bit more complicated. <laughs> Do you want to end on a high five? <laughs> we can try, okay. So <laughs> that was awful. Um, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you at the same time next week for another video. In the meantime, stay safe, take care and happy caking. Bye. <laughs>